When we look at pressure, volume, amount, and temperature, there's a lot of directly and inversely proportional relationships. So what I want to do is go through and look at what those relationships are and then use them to be able to figure out what a new pressure, volume, amount, or temperature will be based on proportionality. Now, we have three different relationships here. And then from those three, we can kind of extrapolate a couple of them. So pressure versus temperature, as long as the temperature is in kelvins, that will be a directly proportional relationship. So what that means is that as the Kelvin temperature doubles, go kind of from here to here, but the pressure will also double. If the temperature in Kelvins triples, the pressure would triple. And so there's this directly proportional relationship where pressure is proportional to temperature. Now in Celsius, that doesn't work because Celsius does not have zero pressure at zero temperature, but Kelvin's does because zero temperature in Kelvin is no motion, or mostly no motion. Second relationship we have is between pressure and amount. And so in pressure and amount, we are again directly proportional, where the pressure is directly proportional to amount. If we have a certain number of gas particles and a certain pressure, if we doubled the amount of particles, then the pressure would double. And whenever we talk about these, of course, whatever is not being discussed, we're assuming is being held constant. So we're assuming the volume and the temperatures are constant here. We're assuming the amount and the volumes are constant here. And then our last one would be pressure and volume. So pressure and volume is an interesting one. This one ends up being inversely proportional. So pressure is proportional to the inverse of volume, or volume is proportional to the inverse of pressure. And what that means is that if the pressure goes up by a certain amount, the volume will decrease by the same proportionality constant. So if the pressure doubles, the volume will half. If the pressure triples, the volume will go to a third of its value. If the pressure halves, the volume will double. Okay. So in this, as one thing gets bigger, the other gets smaller. And as uh, pressure gets bigger, the volume gets smaller. Okay. The other ones, as one gets bigger, the other gets bigger. As one gets larger, the other gets larger. If the amount gets smaller, the pressure gets smaller. So we want to take these proportionalities and use them to do some calculations and figures. So the organizational tool for this is we set up a little table where we have our four different possible variables. And we have an initial and final amounts for all four. And then we're going to use effects and proportionality to kind of put that into some use. So here we're starting with 25.4 liters. And if you want to follow along kind of and do these on your own, there's a link to the document that has these problems in there. So if you're wanting to pause and try it yourself, you can. Uh, 25.4 liters of a gas is released until it occupies a new final volume of 144 liters. And standard pressure. So standard pressure, we can pick whatever we want, but it asks us, what is the initial pressure in kilopascals? So let's see, we're in kilopascals. Let's use standard pressure in kilopascals then. That's 101.3 kilopascals. The amount we're going to assume is constant, and the temperature we're going to assume is constant, because it doesn't mention them. And constant means it's the same. So before and after, it's a proportion of 1, which means it's going to have no effect on how the pressure changed. Likewise here, whatever the temperature was, it ended at the same temperature. So when we go to the figuring, what we next want to do is we want to ask the question of, OK, so the volume changed in this manner. What, what does that mean about how the pressure changed? So this one's a little tricky because it's a little flipped and we're doing our initial condition as the unknown. But the volume got bigger. So if the volume got bigger, what had to have happened to the pressure? The effect is, is that if the volume increased, then we know that the pressure must have decreased. So when we're filling in this, we're looking for how did this change uh, what do we know about this change? So we know that the pressure decreased from start to finish. So what we can do then is we can go, okay, well, if it decreased from here to here, this must have been a bigger number than this one was. And not only that, it must have been bigger by the same proportions as this was. So we can set up kind of a proportionality configuration where we take this uh, and go, okay, well, if this decreased, that means that this is the bigger number. And if we know it's proportional to this proportion, 
then what we can do is, since we know the number was bigger, we can put the larger number on top and the smaller number on the bottom. And we can scale up our pressure by this proportion. Okay? So we can take a calculator and then plug in 101.3 times 144 divided by 25.4, and we end up with a pressure that was 574 kilopascals. Okay, now at that point, we can go through and check on sig figs. It looks like we've got three and three, so we should be good with three sig figs there. And that could be our final answer. So if we go back and think, okay, well, we started with 574 kilopascals. It drops to this. The volume went from here to here, where it was much larger, so that everything in there kind of matches up and makes sense. Let's do a couple more. All right. So here we have a gas exerts 17 atmospheres of pressure. So our initial condition is 17 atmospheres. At 12 degrees Celsius, what would the pressure be at 86 degrees Celsius? So at 12 degrees Celsius, we can't use temperature in degrees Celsius, it has to be in Kelvins. So we need to add 273 to put that into Kelvins, and that's going to give us 285 Kelvins. And then what would the pressure be at 86 degrees Celsius? So again, we're going to need to add 273. So that's going to be 359 Kelvin. Okay. And it wants to know what would the pressure be afterward, afterwards? So the amount of gas we're assuming doesn't change. Volume doesn't change. Those are constant. But we want to know what this final pressure is going to be. So here we go and we look, we have temperature and pressure, which are directly proportional. We know that the temperature is increasing. So if the temperature goes up, that's going to mean that the pressure should also go up. So we would expect the effect of the temperature increasing to be that the pressure will go up. So then we look, we know that 17 is going to increase from here to here. And we know that it's going to increase by the same proportion as the temperature. So if we switch colors here, we're going to take 17 atmospheres to start. 17 is going to increase by this ratio of 359 to 285. So again, we can set up a real simple calculation, 17 times 359 divided by 285, we end up with 21.4, which I'll just go ahead and keep at 21 atmospheres. So if we look then, that makes sense. We went from a, a lower pressure to a higher pressure when the temperature increased. So temperature increased, we get faster particles, we get more collisions, bigger collisions, therefore the pressure goes up. All right, and one more that's perhaps a little more challenging. So here we have a neon bulb has a gas at 14 millimeters of mercury. Temperature is at 480 Kelvin hot, and 247 milliliter bulb. It says nothing about the amount, but it says the same amount of gas. What would it be if it was at standard temperature? That's 273 Kelvin per in a two liter bottle. Okay, so two liters is a problem because this is in milliliters and 2.0 liters. We need to make sure that we have the same units because if we want to make a proportion out of these, we need those units to kind of end up being comparable. And so we can, we can do two things here. We can either change this to 2,000 milliliters, keeping in mind that that zero is significant, um, or we could change this to liters, make this 0.247 and have this stay as 2.0. Either way should work because it's still the same proportion. Okay, so we want to know what our final pressure is. It says the amount of gas is the same. We can ignore that. So this one's a little harder because we have a little bit more stuff. So if we go through and look, what we have going on here is the temperature is decreasing, the volume is increasing, and we want to know how the pressure is changing. So when we evaluate the temperature change, we only want to think about how does the temperature drop affect the pressure. We don't want to look at the volume yet. We just want to go, okay, if the temperature dropped, what will happen to the pressure? And we know that those are directly proportional, so therefore if this decreases, that should decrease. So the effect of this is that it's going to cause the pressure to decrease. This, on the other hand, we also want to evaluate separately. So the volume is getting bigger. So if we think about how does an increase in volume affect the pressure, 
Well, in that case, we're looking at, at a inversely proportional relationship. So if the volume increases, the pressure must have decreased. So the effect of the increase in volume is that the pressure will decrease. So now we have two arrows. We can go ahead and do our solution. So we have 14 millimeters of mercury to start. And we have two proportions. It's going to change by a proportion of smaller number on top, 247 over 2000. And it's also going to change by smaller number on top, 273 over 480. So in this particular example, both of these changes cause the pressure to decrease, so it should be smaller. And it only started at 14 millimeters of mercury, so maybe even a very small amount. So I'm going to go ahead and do all the calculations on that. This comes out to be 0.9833, so let's go ahead and stop there, millimeters of mercury of pressure. So in that particular case then, we're saying that this decreased and decreased about by a factor of 14. That makes sense because this is decreasing, or this is going up by almost a factor of 10, and this is going down by almost a factor of 2. So it makes sense that we see a drop that's pretty significant.